Hello guys, we have made it to the Memorial Cemetery. This is part one of our part two. We're going to walk in here and take a look around. Alright, this little path that we have before us is about the only path you can walk on where there's not anyone buried. So, we will be walking on people. It's not nothing I could help. Just forgive me and have to go on. Okay, this is the original part of the cemetery known to the valet and the Catholics which reaches all the way back into that back sector there. This over here was a secondary. I don't have my paper on me right now, but I do believe this is like the Protestants and other beliefs and things like that. Well, we're gonna go over here to this neat little sign and see if I can read you off some of this stuff. We are yet under the inside quarantine. You can see there's people walking over there too. So I thought I'd go ahead and get this shot for you. Okay. There we go. The St. Genevieve National Cemetery. Got a lot of these. Let's see if I can go slow. I'm not going to read all this. The name of the very first person buried here is not known, neither is the exact date of the barrel, nor the location within the cemetery. The originals of the cemetery, like the beginning of the St. Genevieve herself, are somewhat veiled by time. But there are some neat little things in here. These are, I think, receipts for burial plots. This one here says, on the 31st of August, 1797, was buried in the cemetery of St. Genevieve, the body of Elizabeth Blum, wife of, oh wow, I hate words I cannot say, butcher, immigrants from the United States, strengthened by the sacraments, in witness whereof I sign Maxwell Parish. Okay, that's, that's what that one right there says. Now, Elizabeth is the one up there in the gated, we'll show you that here in a minute. I think one of these I was reading, yeah, he paid for his plot amount of $8. Can you imagine paying for a burial plot for $8 now? But I'm pretty sure you can find a lot of this online and read through it. The cemetery was established in 1787. Alright, so let's make a little walk through here. Okay. So we have a lot of these we are not going to be able to read. But we are going to step off the path here. Lord, forgive me. See a lot of them are falling in and become broken and obviously unreadable. This ground is really wet. I don't know if I could read some of these for you. Do you believe that is 1870 something July 20th 1870 something if you know what that says you can comment below but we'll get more that we can read 
tiger over here. I don't know if that's Dr. Finwick's. I think it is, because that is the one that they say, yeah, that points directly in front of the house. This is Dr. Finwick's. And he said he wanted to be buried so he could look directly at his home. That is a home that we will be investigating next. That's going to be really interesting. All right. So, we're going to travel up here to some of the older ones. I'm trying not to walk too fast. I knew I watched some people's cemetery videos and I get kind of motion sick. Now some of these, a lot of these out here are children. And this says, uh, John B. Ballet, born October 29th, 1831, died February 13th, 1861. I believe that says 32 years, three months, and 10 days. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. I can't really read that scripture there. And this is in memory of Colonel Francis Valet, born December uh, can't really see, 1779, died September. Of 1819. You guys can probably see that better in the light. So yeah, there's some really old ones here. And some of them, they are buried actually on top of each other. Now I went to the uh, Spirit Reunion uh, recently. Last, last year, year before last. And there's like daughters and daddies, you know, buried together, wives and husbands, you know, buried on top of each other. But there's supposedly 5,000 out here. This is Joseph Heretic, uh, born December 30th, 1775, uh, died November 25th, 1852, 76 years. So yeah, he lived a pretty good long life for that time. But as you can see, some of these are falling in and ooh, that one is completely open over there. I'm not sure we're going on that adventure. But this, I believe this is Elizabeth. I believe. No. This is Charles. November 7th, 1959. He was 62 years old. I think Elizabeth is up here. Like I said, I, I know I'm walking across people. It's a little thing that you cannot avoid out here. Like I said in the last video, when they went to bury people, they were digging up people. This is like something you would see in like an old movie or something. It's really neat. A lot of those you cannot read. And they have a, a newer one there that they have redone for Felix Valley. Some of these have just crumbled away and you can't read them at all. Alright, this is Jean Rozier, 
born November 9th, 1777. Died January 1st of 1864. Now think, it was him. When the old St. Genevieve flooded, they brung some of the bodies back up here to be reburied in the new cemetery. Now, I understand they got pictures where he is completely and neatly still fermatized when they, they reburied him. That's kind of nasty. And we have an open hole. I'll stick my hand there. Oh, uh, yeah. We ain't going in there. Alright, on over here, guys. Okay. This person was born in 1800s. Died September 3rd, 1861. So I think we're still in the Valley Catholic part of the cemetery. Yeah, this is the one up here I wanted to show you. It was a really sad story. The, the father, father died of influenza. And it wasn't long after his daughter followed. And they were buried together. I don't know the names. And of course, yeah, we cannot see that. If you can read that, people. John Scott. And his wife is there. But his daughter was buried with them. I know, just like what we're going through now. You know, plagues and cholera and a lot of that was pretty rampant around these parts and kind of crazy I imagine more than so it is now but we are going down here to what they call the swell now I feel a little uneasy down here but the story is on the swell was in 1852 the Dr. Franklin II steamboat was traveling up river to St. Louis when her boilers exploded. Now there was a lot of people that did survive that but mostly none of them didn't and all the bodies that they found along the Missouri River they buried in a mass grave which is in there. There's 30 un 32 unknown people there and I would really like to get out the EVP box here in a minute and do a little EVP session right there okay guys we're kind of squatting down here I don't want to disturb anybody is there anyone here with us is there is there anyone here from the Dr. Franklin too? Were you on a steamboat? What is your name? You can come talk to me, it's alright. We are perfectly safe here. Hello? Hello? What's your name?
It's really peaceful out here. Help. Help? What do you need help with? Do you know your family? Okay, guys, we're not going to spend too much time with that. I apologize, spirits. I mean, we will be back this evening so I can really concentrate on that. I'm kind of out here in the middle of nowhere, kind of freezing my bones off, actually. Nicole don't do cold. Uh, gather everything. Now I'm trying to sit here on the ground. But, okay, so we had the oh, I just got really dizzy for a moment. Like, they are not happy. A lot of the ones that are buried Besides here in the swell, these would have been what I understand if they were not buried with, and I'm sorry for the termination, but I'm, I'm not going to auto-correct history. Um, a lot of slaves were born with their masters, and a lot of them were buried up here, and a lot of the freed slaves we're also buried up here. Ooh wee, that's a, that's a trek up them now. But there's also Native Americans out here. So, yeah, we'll, we'll do a little speaking to those after a while also. We have a little one at five months. That's so sad. They said over half half of 5,000 in the cemetery are children. This one is nameless. Like I said with the epidemics and things, see a lot of these have fallen through. And a lot of these are un unreadable. This one here has a footstone. Sorry, I don't like stepping on people. Um, okay. If you guys can read that. I'm pretty sure I can get back in the light and I can read them. There's a, another infant there. That's really small. I guess these are three infants. I don't like baby grays. Lizzie Jane. Looks like one year, 16 days. And there's some really older ones up here still too. But for what it used to be, I mean, all the wooden crosses, you can imagine, they're completely rotted and gone now. Most of these have broken off. And they're trying to preserve them, so. It's a really good thing. This is a fairly large plot of land. I would say it's three good city blocks. This one here is 1806. This one here. William and Eliza. Age 23 years. 23 years old. Wow, well, they were young too. All right, we are gonna make our way back off the knoll here and down into some of the newer ones. Okay, guys. 
little trek down the hill. It's a fairly large one. I always have one like that whenever I die. John Ballet. So yeah, this is still part of the, the Catholics. February 29th, 1882 to March 6th, 1853. He was 21 years old in six days. This one here is completely crumbled apart, but they, you can see they're trying to make a little memorial here for it, which is John B. Valet, May 3rd, 1827, August 22nd, 1869. This is Mr. Dennis McGill, a native of the Killy Beggs, Ireland, and died June 22, 1844, age 33. And there's a lot of, that's a neat little thing up there. I don't know if you can see it. Looks like. He may have been a, a crafter. There's like crafting things and things monumented into that. Oh, yeah. The rain must be forcing that away. Someone lost their ball. I'm not going after it. Okay. Who do we have? March of 1843. Can't really, you guys can see these better than me. I have a special little blue light that I did not bring with me. Remind me next time I go cemetery troping to bring the light with me. But there is a few newer ones down here. You might turn the voice box on in my pocket. Okay, I did turn the necro on. Is anybody here with us? Hello. It's kind of hard for me to be in tune and walk at the same time. Okay. Hello. So here's a 1759, 1842, 1746, 1834. Okay. Huh. This is the Daughters of the American Revolution. That is really cool. John Baptiste, 1739 to 1790, and Charlotte Lacrosse from 1740 to 1788. There's another one. I know there's like a lieutenant colonel or something. Out here, of like the Revolutionary Wars, and all that storm we had that night, we did gang a pond of water. Augusta. Seventeen ninety to eighteen sixty two. Can anyone tell me what's out here? Is anybody out here? Bob. Bob? Yeah. Bob would be the owner 
of the Fenwick house. You hear his name called out when we were doing the investigation of the bigger home down there. Apparently they like Bob and Tater. Yeah, but I understand that they close this place down here. I am breathing. I'm huffing and puffing. <laughs> Let's go over to Dr. Fenwick's. Dr. Fenwick? Do you want to speak to me? My name's Nicole. Can you tell me what your son's name was? I thought I heard Zedon. I had to look over that. You're welcome. Oh. They told me I was incorrect. <laughs> Let's see here on one of these little benches here a minute. Let's see if I can tune in for just a moment. Does anybody want to speak to me while I'm sitting here? Hi. Are you visiting? Who are you visiting? How many people are here? Oh my goodness, I was not looking at my phone. I looked up and I seen that little tree in my thing there and thought I seen some. Woo -woo! <laughs> Do you like what they're doing to the cemetery? Is Tom out here? I heard Tom. Are you upset that your your stones are gone? Hey, if you give me your name and we can get you a marker made. Do you think we can? Let's see how accurate these people are. Let's walk over here to a name I can read. Are you still with me? Okay. This is Mary Louise. Can you tell me who I'm standing in front of? Okay, what's the guy's name?
Did you say Gushton? Because that's what it looks like. Yeah. You know how old they were? Six, Sixty. Close. Okay. So we are talking this up pretty good. <laughs> so you guys want to know what I use. Most of the time I use the AMFM Spanish scanner backwards. Um, but when I'm out here and I want a little, little clearer response than what's in my head, I use the Necro. I know the Necro is getting a lot of flack, but if you listen to a lot of the ones that do use the Necro, everybody says it's a word bank. I guarantee you, okay, it is a word bank, but everybody gets different responses and noises. And I get a lot of clear ones, like the older lady that was coming through when we done the basement. You can clearly hear a person's voice. I mean, there's no doubt about things that do come through. Grave, just like that one. <laughs> Are the, any of these your graves? I don't like asking, letting people know that they're dead. Some people don't know. I mean, it's like walking into the Beetlejuice doctor's office. You don't really know. Dead. Dead, yeah. This is Sebastian, 1861. You know who this is? A lot of these got destroyed in a storm not too long ago. They're trying to get them back together. Again, yes, it's like a second storm that has came through. Now, last time I was in here, it was at night time. And like I said, I was using the Spanish AM FM radio backwards. And I was getting a lot of words like, get out. DK bones <laughs> so and usually if I get told to get out sorry my phone was dying so I had to switch cameras when I get told to get out I usually get out so okay we are gonna switch cameras here in a minute okay kill one camera we go to another so <laughs> I was just going to run through the Catholic part real quick. I don't want this to be really, really long. Because we do want to come back and do the, the nighttime video. We will probably put R2 yeah, right in here somewhere so we can scan the cemetery. And I will probably have a seat over there on that tree stump. Well, I had to zoom in for that. It is right there. So yeah, we will be sitting in the middle. So I think if I sit in the middle, I'll get it better. I'm not too sure the valet here. I understand they were prominently French, so I mean, yeah, all, all their tombstones are written in French. As you can see. So I have no idea what that says at all. That is the, the big Catholic church. Which was resurrected and re-put where it was at. It is humongous. It's... Oh, <laughs> 
still sitting there. <laughs> Is there anybody here who wants to speak to me? Okay, some of these I can read. September 1845. November 1845. Infant, infants of uh, Francis Rozier. 1847 to 1848. Here's some more children. Thank goodness for French class. Uh, born April 15th. Died April 22nd. Aged seven days. Uh, children of can't read that one. And Mary Janice, eighteen forty-seven, eighteen forty-eight, Godfrey for Francis and Christina. Uh, March, October, yes, March, 27 days. So I don't, I don't know if these were triplets or, I don't know. Something I noticed walking into some older cemeteries, you see that, you know, a child died and then like their brother may have died and then you see another one that I just seems like they try to have a lot of children <laughs> this one's 1810 1855 and this battery is going to die so we will be back ladies and gents and we will be doing this cemetery at night time taking a lot of photos some R2 and some EVPs so stay tuned for that and I hope you enjoy watching me trek through this really old cemetery guys hope you enjoyed our little trek through the cemetery uh, it's cold. We have already killed two batteries, so I didn't come in here with too much today. I wanted to make it a, a short video so you can see what we're getting ready for on the next video when we come here at night time and put up R2, take some pictures, get some really good evidence, some EVPs. Hopefully we'll get some um, disembodiments. I understand there's a, a ghost that likes to wander around here and has been on well, two two have been caught roaming around so hopefully we can get those that would be amazing so with that said everybody stay safe stay inside we are we are not on quarantine yet so you see the little cars running by there yeah so we are perfectly good for now which I look forward to be on lockdown so hopefully we can get the nightly video done before all this sets in so be sure don't have to as i said before hit that like subscribe to us that way you'll get the little ding whenever we do something interesting that you want to see um the summer promo is up um some really fun stuff that we're looking forward to doing a lot of them's gonna be some overnight stuff camping and really in the middle of boondocks so <laughs> really looking forward to that so i hope you are too so everybody again be safe cover your coughs don't cough on nobody quit taking all the toilet paper i'm out of toilet paper in my house so 
stop taking the teleport.